Hello, everybody. Welcome to this video. I am Lacey Van Reith. I'm the Dean of Visual Arts at the Alexander W. Dreyfus School of the Arts, and I am going to be taking you through the audition guidelines for the Visual Arts Department for this coming January, February 2021. Uh, can't believe 2020 is almost over. So uh, these are the audition guidelines for the 21-22 school year. So the auditions for this coming January, February are for entry into the school for the 21-22 school year. All the text that I'm sharing on these slides is uh, what has been published in our audition guidelines. So there's nothing extra in this, um, in this presentation. I am simply just taking you through it step by step. So I make sure that you understand uh, what to expect because it is different this year. Due to the global health pandemic, we have had to adjust how our auditions are going to roll this coming 2021. So a little blurb about the school's department, uh, visual arts department, how we run our curricula, what we expect of our students. Students take a variety of classes. There's a very specific scope and sequence. We encourage our students to develop a personal voice. We require our students to keep a sketchbook for planning and investigation and research. And uh, you develop a cohesive body of work over your time at Dreyfus School of the Arts in the visual arts department. So how are auditions gonna work this year for visual arts? Well, there's gonna be two parts. First, applicants are going to need to make three artworks. You're gonna to have to take the time leading up to your audition, which will either be in January or February, and make three artworks and document them. And then once you come to your virtual audition, you're gonna be submitting the images of your artworks that you made and doing a little writing for us and submitting. And you're gonna be guided through that process. So important notes, you have got to make these artworks ahead of your scheduled audition time. That's a big difference this year. You're not making anything with us, you're making it all ahead of time and you have to have it ready to go for your virtual audition. You need to take pictures of your artwork. So digital pictures of your artwork is what you're gonna be uploading for us. In addition to doing some writing, you're gonna to have to have a total of four images ready to go. Uh, one of your self portrait, one of your still life drawing and two images of your sculpture from two different views or angles. A very, very important thing to note is that submitting a final portfolio of artwork for us at your virtual audition attests that you, the student, the applicant, was the only person to work on the artwork submitted for scoring. Your honesty and integrity in this process are fully expected. Students are going to be asked to virtually acknowledge a submission affidavit verifying the work that they are submitting to be scored is their own work and that nobody else helped them make it. So all materials necessary to complete these required artworks can be easily found at art supply stores, craft stores, office supply stores, or online. They are not hard to find. They're not expensive. Some of you guys might already own many of these materials. Uh, it's, it's very likely possible. And uh, in case there's any, any student who struggles acquiring some of these materials, our department, our school will have 18 by 24 white drawing paper, ebony pen pencils and erasers available for any applicant to come and pick up if they have no way of acquiring them on their own. These are going to be the materials that are needed for the two drawings. So now I'm going to take you through the three artworks that you have to create uh, in order to uh, submit them at your virtual audition. So these are all the things you're going to be making ahead of time. Artwork number one is a self-portrait drawing. A self-portrait is a portrait of an artist produced by that artist. So the applicant's gonna complete a self-portrait drawing. You can do it in either a frontal view or a three-quarter view. You must draw this from life and not a photograph. So you're gonna need a mirror. You should include the entire length of your head and neck, and you could also include your shoulders if desired, but nothing below your shoulder should be included. The materials that you need for your drawing are listed here, but I'm going to take you to this picture that shows you those materials. So you're going to need a white drawing paper uh, or white mix, mixed media paper size 18 by 24. You're going to need an ebony pencil. This is a soft graphite pencil. You are going to need an eraser. We suggest a magic rub. They erase really nicely and cleanly, but any Eraser that erases cleanly will do, meaning it's not going to leave any marks on the paper, guys. It's not going to it's not going to leave an orange mark or something. So a white eraser is best. 
There's also a gum eraser you can use if you have a gum eraser in this picture. You're gonna need a pencil sharpener obviously too for your ebony pencil. You're gonna need a hard surface to draw on. And like I said earlier, you're gonna need a mirror because you're working from life. And we do suggest that students, that applicants uh, spend around two to five hours, between two to five hours in total creating this self-portrait drawing. Self-portraits must be done in either a frontal view or a three-quarter view. And I have two famous works of art here to show you examples of what that means. A frontal view is when you're looking straight on, like the image on the left. I am looking at you all in the camera right now in a frontal view. Three-quarter view is when you turn your head slightly to one side or the other. So you can see three quarters of the face from a three quarter view. And on the right hand painting there of Edward Hopper, we can see he is showing himself in a three quarter view. So your self portrait must be in either the frontal view or the three quarter view. Your self portrait drawing, the evaluation is gonna be based on accuracy. You are asked to demonstrate a sense of proportion in the self-portrait, a use of values, lights and darks is what that means, to show mass and volume in the self-portrait. We're going to be looking at your technique, your ability and skill uh, in handling the materials and understanding of mark making throughout the drawing. And completion and craftsmanship, your final drawing will be assessed for craftsmanship, completion, and your ability to follow all of the directions that we gave to you. During your virtual audition, when you submit these artworks, the, the images of these artworks to us, we are going to ask you to write a brief blurb, an explanation, two to five sentences about the creation of your self-portrait and how long total hours wise you spent on the drawing. So please make sure you keep track of that for yourself as you're completing your self-portrait drawing. Artwork two is a still life drawing. A still life is a painting or drawing of an arrangement of objects. In the still life drawing, you are going to have to depict six objects and we wanted to put everybody in the same kind of realm here. The playing field needed to be kind of equal. So we are dictating which six objects you need to feature in your still life. So the still life should include the six objects listed below, which are readily available household items and an item found outside. You need a cup, excuse me, I'm going to go in order, a shoe, a cup, a book, a spoon, a plain t-shirt, meaning it has no writing or print on it. It's just a plain color. Any color will do. And a sprig with leaves or a small branch with leaves from a tree or bush. So I went around my house and outside and I acquired these objects for myself to show you what this would look like for me. I have a cup there, a yellow coffee cup, a shoe, a book, a plain gray t-shirt, a branch from a sea grape tree, and a large spoon from my kitchen. So that is what I need. The arrangement and execution of the drawing, we give you some guidance. The objects can be arranged in whatever manner you choose. The objects should be placed on a flat surface, but you can place them and stack them and drape them atop or alongside one another as you so choose. We suggest that you get creative in your compositions to allow you to showcase proportion, values, lights and darks and perspective within your drawing. It is recommended that applicants set up their still life somewhere where, it, where it's not going to be disturbed until you are done with it. You do not want your objects to move. If you're working on it over a series of days, you wanna make sure that they stay put. The artist must showcase all six items in their drawing. This is an important one, but you're not expected to fit the entirety of the object of all six objects in the composition. Some objects likely will and can overlap with one another and might go off the edges of your paper, of your composition, and that's totally fine. The still life drawing should be drawn just like the self-portrait from life. You should not be referencing a photograph. Materials needed and suggested time. I'm gonna take you to this, this picture again because the materials needed are the same as the self-portrait drawing. White drawing paper or mixed media paper size 18 by 24, an ebony pencil, uh, a, a sharpener, an eraser that erases clean, either a magic rub or a gum eraser. The applicant uh, will need a consistent view of their still life and a hard surface on which to draw. The applicant will need to light their still life in order to showcase lights and darks. So point a lamp towards it or, or put it in a room that has lights that turn on. We suggest like the self-portrait assignment, you spend between two to four, two to five hours total um, working on your still life drawing. So I took my objects and I set them up in a variety of ways to show you all of the different ways, just a few 
there's so many different ways you could compose your composition for your still life. So uh, here are two vertical compositions and you can see that I have showcased all six items, but you can't see all of the items. Some of them go off the edges. You can only see a little portion of some of the items and that's totally fine. I did get all six items in some way in the composition. Here is a horizontal composition of all the items, a little bit more zoomed in, a little bit more honed in. You can see the shirt, you can see the sea grape um, branch and leaves. The shirt is also in the book and then the cup and the spoon is in the cup and the shoe. Everything's on top of the shoe. So these are all uh, just in here to show you ways that you could set up your still life. The evaluation of your still life is going to be based on accuracy, a demonstrated sense of proportion in the still life, a use of values in the still life. That's again, lights and darks. Uh, to show mass and volume and the perspective of objects demonstrated in the still life. Where are they uh, in comparison to one another, their relationship to one another? Technique, your ability uh, and skill in handling the materials and understanding of mark making throughout your still life drawing. Completion and craftsmanship. Final still life drawing will be assessed for composition, craftsmanship, and the ability to follow directions. Just like the self-portrait drawing, we will be asking you to give us a little uh, brief blurb and explanation, two to five sentences. It will not be scored, but we will be asking for it at the audition about the process you went through when creating your still life drawing, how long you spent on it hour wise. So please make sure you are keeping track of that. The third artwork that you have to create for your audition is a paper sculpture, a paper 3D design. So a sculpture is an art work involving uh, the making of three-dimensional represent representative or abstract forms. So for your paper sculpture, you will make a paper sculpture based on one of the provided word prompts. Your design for this paper sculpture should be based on only one of the word prompts below. It's up to you which word prompt do you choose. You have a option of four different prompts this year. You can choose absorb, absorb, un unveil, Distort or divide, whichever one of those you would like, but only one. I have provided you with brief definitions of each of those words, but applicants, you are free to further research the definitions of these words if you so choose, because I have provided a very brief blurb, a very brief definition for each one. But those are your four options for this year. Your sculpture, your, your design must be based on one of them. So your sculptures must be three-dimensional. You may create them using black or white paper, one or the other, not both. So you must choose black or you must choose white, but you may, may not mix black and white paper together. Paper forms can be assembled, sculpted using white glue, glue sticks, hot glue, and or clear tape. You can use all of those things. You can use just one of those things. You can use only two of those things. It's totally up to you. Uh, you can also uh, carefully fold the paper to uh, put it together if that's the method that you choose. Sculpture should be well constructed and attention to craftsmanship should be noted. That means the quality and the care that you take with your sculpture. And we do have a size expectation, guys. We want your sculptures to be at least the size of your fist, uh, like ball up your fist like this. That's, that's what we mean by size of your fist. And we do not recommend making anything larger than a desktop. So think about your average student desk at school. It shouldn't be any bigger than that. And uh, you are allowed to use as much paper as you want, as much, as much paper as you need to make your design uh, come into fruition. So materials needed, I took a picture again of some of the, uh, of, of the materials that you are going to need. Again, black or white paper. I have one sheet of each in this photograph, but remember you are choosing either black or white, not both. You can use one sheet, you can use 20 sheets, you can use 50 sheets. It depends on your design and how much paper you need, but you have to choose either white or black. You totally can use whatever white paper you have available or black paper you have available. Uh, we recommend construction paper. We do not recommend tissue paper because it's not durable enough. But whatever black or white paper you want to use, you may use. Uh, you should use the same paper throughout the entire sculpture though. You shouldn't mix and match different types of black paper, different types of white paper. Just use the same type of paper, either black or white.
You're probably going to want scissors so you can cut your paper. You are also allowed to tear your paper. That's up to you. You can use white glue, glue sticks, hot glue, or clear tape as needed. Mix them up. Use one. Use the other. Use them all. It's, uh, it's totally up to you. And like your drawings, we suggest that you spend between two to five hours making your paper sculpture. Evaluation of your 3D design will be based on your design, your ability to creatively and effectively communicate the chosen word prompt through your design or your form. Completion and craftsmanship, your final paper sculpture will be assessed for overall success, care and use of materials, and the ability to follow directions. At your virtual audition, when you submit your artwork, you will also be asked to give us a brief written statement, uh, about five sentences or so, on your design and how it um, aligns with the word prompt that you chose. So we will be looking in that clarity with explanation of how your design is related to or reflects the word prompt that you chose. We do have some suggestions for documenting, photographing your work. Uh, any digital camera you have access to will do. All the pictures I've shown you in this presentation were taken with my phone. Most of us have smartphones now that have pretty good quality cameras. Most of those are gonna be perfectly adequate, but any digital camera you have will do. The, it's best that your images are in the JPEG or PNG file format. They should ideally be 300 DPI if you have the ability to uh, check the pixels on your picture. But ultimately, my friends, we need to make sure that our pictures are clear and crisp and not blurry. When you take your images of your work, we want you to consider these suggestions. Position your camera to zoom in as tight as you can on the artwork. You shouldn't have stuff around the image of your artwork. We just want to see the work. We don't want to see the surrounding area or the grass or the concrete that you're taking your photograph on. We want to look at the work. Uh, we want you to use as much natural light as possible. Natural light usually provides the best quality images. Uh, you don't want to have any really super direct sunlight because that's going to probably create some glare or cast shadows of you or your phone on your artwork or your camera. That's not good. Sculptures are naturally going to cast shadows. We understand that. That's okay that the sculpture itself casts a shadow in the photographs, but your shadow of your body should not be in your images. A shadow of your phone, it, that should not be happening. And you should try to use as often as you can neutral or non-distracting backgrounds uh, and avoid putting work on reflective services that can create glare. So we suggest something that's black or white or gray as a background uh, for taking your photographs of your work. So I uh, picked one of my student drawings, one of my students, Nicole, I just chose her drawing because it was the right size. It's 18 by 24 and she used ebony on this drawing. But um, this is clearly not one of the drawings you're going to be doing. Remember, you're going to be doing a self-portrait and you're going to be doing a still life. This is a figure drawing. But I wanted to show you what bad documentation looked like. And then I wanted to show you what good documentation looked like. This is bad documentation. On the left, I'm far away. The picture is crooked. I can see my feet. On the picture on the right, I'm really far away and it's crooked. Like I'm not showcasing the work in this photograph. I am showcasing the dirty concrete and all the space around it. And the work is very very small, not good. These are much better. I got in tight onto the drawing on this picture on the left and I've left a black border. That's fine. On the right hand side, I just cropped that black border out and I focused primarily on the drawing. That is what we want. These would be both great choices, great images to upload for your drawings. And I did not make a paper sculpture, my friends, to uh, to use in this demonstration. I just used a coffee cup. But pretend this coffee cup is your sculpture. After you're done making your paper sculpture out of black paper or white paper, you have to document it in two views. So you can see that this is the exact same coffee cup taken from two different views. This is another example of the exact same coffee cup taken from two different views. So this is what we mean by two views of your paper sculpture. You can choose what views are best. We want you to include the entire sculpture in both photographs. Important reminders, you should not digitally manipulate your images after you take them. Only crop. You should not do anything else to your images. Remember that these are just a digital representation of your artwork. If we were to see the actual artwork in person, it should look the same as the digital image. You should not do any kind of other digital manipulation to it because that is considered uh, dishonest with how you're representing your work. 
So the images you need to have ready for your virtual audition submission. You need to have one image of your completed self-portrait. Be sure that none of the drawing is cropped off. One image of your completed still life drawing. Be sure that none of the image is cropped off. And you need two images of your paper sculpture taken from two different angles. Uh, and this is so we can get a full understanding of what that sculpture looks like in three dimensionality. At your virtual audition, you will be submitting these artworks. So this is gonna be done via Google Classroom. You all re will receive an invitation to this and a set time, and you need to follow those directions. It'll be coming from the school. Through this process, you will be guided by an adjudicator who is a teacher. It will likely be me, but it also could be one of my colleagues. And we will be holding your hand digitally through this. We will show you how to upload your images to Google Classroom. We will show you how to answer the, the questions that you have to write for us on the Google Doc. Uh, this will all be demonstrated for you. After directions and demonstrations are given, the applicants will be given 30 minutes to upload their four images and answer the three prompts on the provided Google Doc and turn in their submission. And that is it. So we want to thank you for watching this today. We wanted to make sure that we took you through all of these steps and uh, that you you weren't surprised by anything that was going on in this year's audition process because it is quite different than normal. And we look forward to seeing your work. Have a good one.